Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is August the 3rd, 2023. So many things transpired on this day. Whew, to God be the glory. All right. Yesterday, let me tell you, uh, introducing and, and beginning to talk about the law of prayer was, I'm going to say, phenomenal. Because as I was sharing in scripture, then that is what the Holy Spirit was giving unto me to even make mention of the law of prayer. And this morning, as you know, I meditate before I get up. I talk to the Lord before I get up, asking Him about what we are doing and what does He have to say and keeping my communication open with the Lord. And so this morning, I was thinking about that word and uh, the notes that I wrote on the law of prayer. And it came to me, I'm going to extend that, and we're going to talk about the law of spiritual authority. That's right. Because when it comes to the law of prayer, that is actually bringing us into the law of authority. Something else that came to me. I have all these awesome notes in my phone and... So I'm going to share something else with you. Um, and I was listening to something. And because uh, I've been on my downtime binge watching a series on Netflix. Woohoo to me <laughs> for taking some downtime. But what I was watching, this phrase struck out at me. And it was authority to hold someone's attention authority to hold someone's attention and that got me that caught my attention now when we look at the law of prayer and we are being led by God through the Holy Spirit to pray that brings us to the law of spiritual authority now, the, uh, the authority to hold someone's attention, Jesus had the authority to hold the people's attention when he began to teach and he began to use parables. Peter and Paul and the other apostles, at times, they were in a realm that they had the authority to hold someone's attention. That someone, remember, everything pertaining to God, listen, we walk by faith and not by sight. And God is holy. We must be holy. The things of God pertaining to the kingdom of heaven are spiritual. And so this morning, I hear the law of spiritual authority. What is the law of spiritual authority? So when I am praying and I am being led and guided by the Holy Spirit, I am saying what God wants me to say, what he wants me to speak to concerning a situation, a circumstance, that's spiritual authority. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are of a royal priesthood of a holy nation. We are called according to his purpose. That gives us spiritual authority. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That is spiritual authority. 
Now we have faith and obedience. Those two keys unlock our spiritual authority. So we can have spiritual authority but not know how to operate in it. Or not know that we do have spiritual authority. But we believe in Jesus Christ by faith. We believe by faith that God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Faith. Now my faith will cause me to move in obedience as I follow after righteousness. How do I follow after righteousness but by the Holy Spirit who will lead and guide me, who will reveal unto me that which he hears from heaven, following after righteousness. Now, as I follow the Holy Spirit, which is going to draw me, lead me after Christ. That's right. The Holy Spirit draws us to Christ, leads us and guides us, gives us a revelation and the knowledge of Christ. So when I relinquish and I say, I know not what I ought to pray for because that is scripture that is Romans 8 26 the Holy Spirit already knows we know not what we ought to pray for but maketh intercession for us and groanings which cannot be uttered which could not be understand because he and God the, the Trinity Father Son and the Holy Spirit they have a heavenly language Oh God, if you can hear me clapping. They have a heavenly language that I cannot comprehend in my flesh. Mm -mm. So God releases what I need to pray about. How I need to speak to a certain situation, a circumstance. How I need to speak to it. Sometimes I just need to be quiet, hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Speak joy. Think the way that I think. That that's the law of spiritual authority. Whatsoever uh, that, that think, think ye on holy things, which is holy and pure and of righteousness. Think think ye on those things, being transformed by the renewing of our mind. That is spiritual authority. So if I say what God tells me to say, I am walking and operating in spiritual authority. This morning, as I wrote this out, the law of spiritual authority, the whole armor of God is only operational, authoritative, functional when we are in the will of God. Because the whole armor is spiritual and God is spiritual. The things of the flesh are carnal and cannot comprehend the things of the spirit of God. It's not our flesh that lifts up a standard against the enemy. It's the spirit of the Lord. And that's found over in Isaiah 59, 19. And so, when we look at the components of the armor, as mentioned in Ephesians, the 6th chapter, 10th through, going through the 18th verse, in order for the components of the spiritual armor to be operational, authoritative, and functional. I have to be in the will of God. That's the only way this armor is going to work. And it is all by faith. I can't get dressed in an armor that I don't believe in, that I don't have faith in, that I don't know how to use when to use it does me no good I can put the armor on but if I don't know how to use the arm, armor I have no spiritual authority 
Because even though I put it on, I must be led on how to use it, when to use it. I thought about David. Saul wanted to dress David in his armor, but he couldn't wear that armor. He was already dressed. He already had the tools, but he had to be led on how to use those tools, that armor, in that battle, that spiritual authority. So it is more about the armor itself. It is knowing how to use the armor. Not knowing how to use your spiritual authority does us no good. I can have access to something, but if I don't know how to use it, when to use it, it does me no good. Same thing with the armor. Same thing with the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And so we must know how to use and when the armor of God. It tells us how to get dressed. But in order to know how and when to use it, we need to be in the will of God, which is being led by the Holy Spirit. And so what I've been seeing, what I've been seeing is, is many who, oh God, we need to stop playing with God. God is nothing to play with. Mm -mm. We can't have, and I, I've heard the term, seen it several places, we can't have a mouthful of scripture but a heart full of doubt, a heart full of disobedience. It, it, it doesn't go together like that. And so I've been seeing some things and it really grieves my spirit, it does. But then it also opens up an opportunity to share about spiritual authority the law of spiritual authority. Remember on yesterday when we gave the definition of law? And let's let's look at that definition again. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to the balance of life. And I thank you so very much for joining us today. Don't forget to join us tomorrow afternoon at 12 o'clock p.m. for midday Bible study. All right. So the meaning of the word law means the system of rules which a particular country or community re recognizes as regulating the action of its members and which it may enforce by the imposition of penalties. They were taken to court for breaking the law. Another definition is a rule of defining correct procedure or behavior in a sport the laws of the game. And so we are members. We are members of the body of Christ. And there are some regulations for the members of the body of Christ. Over in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, beginning at the tenth verse, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. These are instructions. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, we have quoted and shared with you Isaiah 59, 19. Talking about when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Here, 
and putting on the whole armor of God, it is spiritual. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be, may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, listen to this, in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So I'm dressed. But where am I going? When do I need to use this armor? I have the authority on me. But I must know how and when to use that authority. And so I don't want us to take it lightly that we have this authority. Don't misuse the authority that you have. Don't use this authority on one another. It is not the individual that is coming up against or being negative or fighting us. It is the spirit, the influence of the enemy that is fighting against you and I to hinder God's purpose. And so I'm at this place that says I must be governed by the Holy Spirit. I want to know how to move and operate in what I have. Mm -hmm. That's a law of spiritual authority knowing what you have how to use it and when without the basis of that having the authority is really mute not knowing what to do with what you have not tapping into the fullness of what you have prime example and this is so funny about five six years ago I purchased a Roku device and I've had it put it onto my television I bought it for one purpose but whenever I would use it I would only you know look at the um I would look at Tubi, I would look at the Roku channel, and now I look at Netflix. And recently, while in Florida, um, at my sister's house, and she has that on all of her televisions, it finally clicked, okay, and I'm laughing at myself because I just discovered this, that I had the same access on my device that she has, and I didn't know it. See, we can have something and not understand fully what we have. So, at the course of time at her house, clicking over to the live TV option, you have all access to all kind of channels and, and, and things of that nature. Do you not know I never utilized mine in that manner until I got back and I got back in New Jersey on um, July the 11th. And messing around with mine, 
I decided to hit that live TV button. See, on the Roku device, you have an option to look at free. Free things. Which are sometimes movies and or other things like that. But to go to the live TV option, I had never done it. I laughed at myself. I'm like, wow, you've had this device for six years. And you did not even check out all of the features. I thought I was limited. It's the same way with the whole armor of God. I had a full package to do what I needed to do. I did not take the time because I rem I only bought it for one purpose. I only bought the device because it was a part of our setup to be on the Roku network. That's the only reason why I bought it. It was not my television preference. That's not why I bought it. So I did not take the time to look at all that it offered. And even from time to time when I turned it on, I still only went to look over at my Netflix to watch some movies. And I said, here I am. All this time, I had full access and didn't even know it. It's the same way with spiritual authority. Full access, but not operating in all of those areas. It's there. But we don't use them. And so therefore they're dormant. But if we follow the law of prayer... then we will be led and guided in the operation and the spiritual authority that we have. Don't just say, I got the whole armor of God. I'm dressed. Dressed for what? What you doing? Where are you going? How are you using this armor? We have access to something, but we, we don't even know what we have. Because we are not open to letting the Holy Spirit fully lead us and guide us. We want to control how we move and operate in the Holy Spirit. That's a dangerous place to be in. But if we would submit ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, and we would fully allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Scripture says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I need this armor. But I need to know how to use it. And I need to know when to use it. Sometimes we have to walk in peace. The gospel. The preparation of the gospel of peace. Sometimes the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, always in truth, always in truth, in righteousness. I need all of the. I need. I need all of the armor. I definitely have to get fully dressed. But if I don't understand what I have, my spiritual authority is. It'll do me no good. 
the reason why I need my loins girt about with truth, which is the word of God, because the enemy, listen, he ain't concerned about my words. He's not concerned about my carnal actions, my carnal way of thinking. So that is why the word of God, the law of spiritual authority, teaches us how to use the authority that we have. He's telling us that we're not wrestling against anything in the flesh. It's the Holy Spirit and then there is a diabolical spirit, which diabolical means demonic. We have the Holy Spirit of God. He has given us our spiritual weapons of warfare. And in order for them to be functional, authoritative, and operational, I must be in the will of God. Which means I must be led by God. I have to know how to use what I have and when to use it. The, the, the spiritual authority of God is nothing to play with. It's not a toy. It's nothing to go around and brag about. It's nothing for somebody to use against another person because they angry. Because you mad at them, so you're going to pray against them. Mm -mm. Don't mishandle the armor. Don't mishandle your spiritual authority. Don't do that. To God be the glory. So understand what it is that you have. Understand that you have something that is everybody else don't have access to it mm -mm. but once you get it once you get it ask the Holy Spirit to teach you on how to utilize it when and, and 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 why do you have spiritual authority? That that's a very good question. So why do I have spiritual authority? To bind things on earth as it is in heaven, and to loose things on earth as it is in heaven. Why do I have spiritual authority? Teach me how to use what you gave me. I don't want to play with God. I don't want to play with spiritual authority. Don't use your spiritual authority as an intimidation factor. Like, like we better than somebody. Uh -uh. No. But understand what you have. Mm -hmm. understand what you have know how to use it know when to use it that is the richness that's the realness about spiritual authority it's not that you have the armor it's that you know how to use the armor and when to use the armor that is the real finesse of having spiritual armor There's depths to this. There's levels to this. We're just touching the iceberg. Know that I love you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.